Let's go up to File and then let's go to Open Scene and let's open up Timing.mb. Alright, so I have two objects here. I have a pendulum and I have a ball that we're going to pretend is a basketball. So we're going to use these two objects to demonstrate the principle of timing and the principle of slow in and slow out. Okay, but before we get started on this exercise, I want to make sure that your settings are exactly the same as my settings, okay? So um, down here, make sure that your auto keyframe toggle is turned on. That's this little red button right here. We can turn that off and turn it back on. So we'll make sure that is turned on. Right here, I'm going to go to my animation preferences. And under the time slider, I'm going to make sure my playback speed is set to real time. 24 FPS, that's frames per second. And I'm going to slide up here. I'm going to go to animation. And I'm going to make sure that weighted tangents is checked. And I have my default in tangent set to linear, my default out tangent set to linear. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a two panel view. So I'm going to go over here, click on this button. Now I have a graph editor on the bottom. And on the top, I have a perspective panel, and I'm going to switch this. So I'm going to go to Panels, Orthographic, and then I'll go to Front. And then I'm going to hit A, because I want to see both of those objects. I'm going to dolly out a little bit more. So I want some more space for this panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide both the shelf and the status line. So I'm going to go to Display, UI Elements, and I'm just going to go to Status Line and just let go of the mouse. And that's going to hide the status line. I go to display UI elements a second time and go to shelf. And now the shelf is hidden. So now I have a little bit more space in my panel here. All right, we're going to start with the pendulum. So I'm going to go to the basketball layer and I'm going to click on this right, this V right here to turn off the visibility. And we're just going to focus on the pendulum for the first part of the exercise. So let's talk about timing first, and then we'll talk about slow in, slow out. So when we talk about the timing on our animation, what we're generally referring to is the speed. So if we space our keyframes very far apart, that's going to make our object move slowly uh, wherever it's moving on the screen. Okay, And if we space those keyframes very close together, that object is going to move very fast on the screen. Okay, So our timing is determined by how far apart we set our keyframes. So let's start with um, our timeline down here. Let's say I want the pendulum to do one loop, swing from the left side to right and then back to the left side again. So let's say we'll start, we're not sure what we want the timing to be, so let's start with 21 frames, which is just under one second. All right. So um, let's start with 21 frames, but let's increase our total range all the way to 81 frames. Okay, so we'll try a few different things. So I'm going to select the pendulum. Okay, I've got it selected over here. And I'm basically just going to go to Rotate Z. All right, so I actually have my Rotate tool showing right here. So let's rotate this to the left. And I've kind of eyeballed where I want this to be. And let's round this number off over here in the channel box. So I'm going to type in negative 35 and then press return. All right. So my time slider is on frame one. That's our start point. So I'm going to go to rotate Z. I'll just click on it. And then I'll right click and hold and go down to key selected to set a keyframe. Now I've got my auto keyframe toggle turned on, which means I don't have to go over here and right click to set a keyframe anymore for rotate Z. So I'm going to go from frame 1 to 11, halfway through, and I'll rotate over here to the other side. And actually, it might be easier just to go to Rotate Z and type in positive 35. OK. So here, down here in the graph editor, we can see we've got two keyframes now. We've got a line in between those keyframes. And uh, this line gives us our in-between frames that we need. So let's go from 11 to 21. And I'll just go back here to rotate Z. And I'm going to type in negative 35 for our last frame. 
So now here we have our animation. Um, I'm just going to hit play and we'll watch and see what we think of the timing. So this might be a little bit hard to see because I'm recording the screen and we might not have a high enough frame rate. But to me, it looks like the pendulum is moving too fast. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete the animation on this and I'll start again. So I'm, I'll just select all of the keyframes on my graph right here and press delete. So I'm going to switch and let's slow things down. I'll, let's say we want to try 81 frames for our animation. So I'll type in 81 and on rotate Z right here we'll start we'll stay at 35 so negative 35 make sure your time slider is on frame 1 so I'll right click go to key selected and then I'm gonna go to frame 41 halfway through our clip here and I'll type in positive 35 and press return and I have my auto keyframe turned on so I don't have to do anything else and now I'm gonna go forward from 41 to 81 and at 81 I'm just gonna click on rotate Z and I'll type in negative 35 so I can't see my entire graph but I can go over here to view and then go to frame all and now I can see the entire graph it looks the same as the other one it's just uh, we've got more frames so let's hit play on our uh, timeline here and just see what it looks like so now it looks like it's moving in slow motion so in the beginning we had the pendulum moving too fast and now it's moving too slow so I'll once again go in here and I'll just delete the graph and I'm gonna change my range to 41 frames and let's go in and on frame 1 on the time slider let's type in rotate Z negative 35 and let's make sure we set a keyframe so I'll go right click go to key selected and then on frame 21 I'll type in a value of 35 on rotate Z and press return and then from 21 I'll go to 41 and I'll type in once again negative 35 and press return so here we have our graph here and let's hit play and check so this is more of what I'm looking for in terms of the timing the speed that I'm looking for for the pendulum so I'm gonna hit stop and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here just so we can get a better view I'll play this one more time so that's the speed that I want so now that we have our timing let's talk about slow in and slow out if I look at this graph right here and I start on frame one and I look over here at rotate Z the value is uh, the rotate Z value it's negative 35 degrees if I go from frame 1 to frame 2 this rotate Z value goes down to negative 31.5 so it's changed 3.5 degrees between frame 1 and frame 2 if I go to frame 3 it goes down to 28 it's changed again it's rotated another 3.5 degrees if I keep going down this list you'll see these numbers are changing by a value of 3.5 all the way to frame 21 and from 21 to 41 it's the same increments it's just going in the opposite direction so what we have right now is we have even spacing between 1 to 11 to 21 to 31 to 41 and what we want is we want the pendulum to this is our extreme uh, our keyframe or our extreme position we want is we want it to slow out of this position accelerate in the in the area down here and then as it comes back up we want it to decelerate we want it to slow down and slow in to this position 
And then as it swings back this way, it will slow out of this position, accelerate as it reaches the base, and then decelerate and slow into this position. So we have a slow in, slow out for each keyframe. So how does that look on the graph editor? Well, I can select, uh, let's just select the top frame right here and let's go to flat tangents. And now if I hit play, when the pendulum reaches the apex on this side where my arrow is pointing, it's going to slow in and slow out of that keyframe. Now over here, on the left side when it reaches the apex, it hits that pretty hard and it leaves pretty fast. Okay, so we've got our slow in, slow out on this side, but not on the other side. So this is just so you can see the difference between a keyframe where you have a slow in and a slow out and a keyframe where you don't. So let's change everything to slow in and slow out since this is a pendulum and it's not, we don't need it to bounce off of anything. So I'm gonna hit flat tangents right here and now what I have is I've got a slow out right here at the start, acceleration. As I get close to this keyframe, I'm going to slow into it. As I leave this keyframe, it's going to slow out, accelerate. As it reaches the last keyframe right here, it's going to slow in. And then the loop will repeat. We go from this position back to frame one, and so we've slowed into this keyframe. And then our loop starts here and we slow out of the first keyframe. So when we hit play, it's smooth as it reaches the apex. It slows in and slows out of the apex on both sides. So if we look at this mathematically, we start on frame one. I'm at my rotate Z values at negative 35. Now, if I go from frame one to frame two, look at the change on rotate Z. We've only moved or rotated about 0.5 degrees. The change from frame two to frame three is only about 1.5 degrees. So it's an increase as we go forward. So from three to four, it's about 2.3 degrees. By the time we get to frame 11, when we're at the bottom, if we go from frame 11 to frame 12, now at the bottom we're moving five degrees. So you can see the numbers. As we reach the apex, the spacing between, the positions between the two frames are very slight. And then as we come down to the middle here, the position, the spacing between the frames is greater. And then we get to this other keyframe and it, once again, it slows down. The spacing gets shorter and shorter. So another term that animators will use for slow it in, slow out is the spacing. You know, how close together are the, is the object or the drawing from the next one, okay? So you can refer to it as slow in and slow out, or you can say, uh, you can say timing, slow in and slow out, or you could say, um, timing and spacing. Those two things together are what really make your animation come to life or look realistic. Okay, so let's turn off the pendulum layer and let's turn on the visibility on the basketball layer. So I'm just going to move this to the center of the screen and I will select the basketball and let's once again, let's look at the timing. If I change this to 21, and let's say I move the basketball up along the y-axis to a value of 12. Translate y is 12. And then I'll set a keyframe right there. Now the ball's gonna come down and hit the ground on frame 11. So I'll come down here, hit the ground, and so we'll change the translate y value to one. And then it's gonna go back up into the air again on frame 21. So I'll move my slider to 21. Then I'll move the object back up to a value of 12 for translate y. So now I'll hit play and you can see here we've got our bouncing ball. 
but I think it's moving too fast because I don't have the correct timing. So what I'm going to do is instead of deleting all the keyframes, I'm just going to move them. Okay, so I'm going to change my range here to 41 and I'm going to leave my keyframe on frame 1, but I'll move my keyframe on 11 and 21. So I'm going to move my slider to 21. I want this dark uh, brown line right here. So I'm going to select two keyframes. I'm going to select this keyframe right here and the second keyframe and the third keyframe. I want to slide this over on the graph. So I'm going to hit W for my move tool. I'm going to hold down the shift key and then I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button on my mouse and I'm going to slide this over. And I'm stopping on frame 21 right here. So now I'll let go and I want my third keyframe to be on 41 so I'm going to move my time slider so that I know where to move this keyframe to. Okay, so I'm going to select the keyframe right here, hold down shift, hold down the middle mouse button and drag to 41 and then stop. All right, so I've moved my keyframes. Now I'm going to hit play and let's look at the animation. So this is more of the speed I'm looking for. So now I have my timing set. So now let's do the spacing. So I'm going to select all of the keyframes. I'll go to view and then go to frame all. So here's our animation and let's we don't want this uh, linear tangents, right? We want to change our slow in and slow out so that this looks more realistic. So I'm going to select everything, all three keyframes, and I'm going to hit flat tangents button right here. It worked for the pendulum, so it's, you know why wouldn't it work for the bouncing ball? So I'll hit flat tangents, and I'm going to hit play. Well, that did not work. So I've got my slow in and slow out at the apex, but actually, when you think about it, when it hits the ground, it's not going to slow down before it hits the ground. If this is a basketball, it's going to accelerate as it goes down, and it's going to hit the ground hard. You know, So we don't want to slow into the ground, and we don't want to slow out. It's going to hit the ground. It's going to compress as it hits the ground and shoot back up. So what we need to do is we need to change this from flat tangent we want to do the opposite so I'm going to select the keyframe down here in the middle and I'm gonna do what's called breaking the tangents so I'm gonna click on this button right here and that will allow me to adjust each of these handles separately okay so I'll just click and drag on this handle right here and then I'll make sure I hit W for my move tool and I'll hold down the middle mouse button over this blue handle and I'll drag up. Now I'm adjusting the curve as it approaches this keyframe in the middle. So now I'll click and drag a box around the handle on the right hand side and I'll hold down the middle mouse button and drag this up to adjust the curve on this side. So now if I hit play, when it hits the ground, it's still accelerating. It's still going fast. Now it's a little bit hard to see because of my screen capture software. It's not capturing at a high frame rate. But if you look at this, if you make this adjustment and you look at this on your computer, then you'll see as it hits the ground, it hits it's moving fast when it hits the ground and it's moving fast when it leaves the ground. Okay, So what we essentially want is we don't want any slow in and slow out on this keyframe in the center. We want it up here as it reaches the apex and in fact we can make more adjustments to this. I can select the keyframe here and I can free the tangent weight and if I free the tangent weight I can select this tangent 
I can hold down shift, hold down the middle mouse button on my mouse, I can drag this out. And what this does is it ex it gives me a slower out from this keyframe. And I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll free the tangent weight, select this handle, hold down shift, hold down the middle mouse button and drag out. And I've got a slow in, I'm going even slower in. So what I'm doing is I'm just making this even more extreme. So we got we have more hang time in the air now. Okay, so before you turn this in, just click on the layer right here for the pendulum and let's turn on both layers. And then before you quit Maya, make sure that you save your work. And this is the conclusion of our first exercise in Unit 7.